Hi, this is Sean from Bob K Cam Technical Support, and today I'm going to take you through a couple of the Pro Toolpath features. The first one we're going to go through is going to be the advanced rough without rest roughing checked, but we do have adaptive roughing, which is a high speed machining option available inside the Pro Toolpath. So we're going to go ahead and edit this. I already have all my geometry selected. I am not using boundaries as I'm machining the entire part at once. So in here you have the rapid, the feed, and the top of part. Rapid is how high it lifts up inside of the part while when it needs to wrap it above a section. Feed plane is how high above the part before it starts feed movements. Okay, so we're going to go to posting next here. You have your work offset, your output rotor angle, and your arc fit options in here. Output rotor angle, so if you want to manually set the index that you want to rotate to. And arc fit's going to convert every available line movement into an arc segment where possible. Next page is going to be your roughing, which is just going to be your tool selection. Here we're using a one inch diameter tool with a half inch corner radius. Um, it's going to be important to kind of keep note of this as in the next two features that we have following the first advanced rough, we have two advanced roughs with rest roughing, which we'll overview when we get to those features. So patterns, you have different kind of cut patterns here. You can use a zig, a zigzag, and both give you the option for adaptive roughing, which is that high speed machining strategy available inside of the Pro Toolpath for 3D uh, calculations um, where you're not doing a two dimensional toolpath. We'll go to parameters as our next. You have your options for your depth of cut, climb step over, and conventional step over. Conventional for when you're using zigzag is how much you want it to step over when doing that conventional cut. Uh, climb, obviously, when you're climb cutting, how much do you want the step over to be, along with the available depth of cut for how deep do you want the tool to move. The intermediate steps, useful feature, not a lot of people use it. Um, picture doesn't kind of show it all that well. Very cool. Uh, kind of helps alleviate some of that three dimensional pyramid stepping that you see in some 3D uh, roughing strategies. Here we have a 50 thousandths allowance set. Very important um, to keep note of this as we go on through our tool paths uh, for the next two for our, air, our rest roughing operations. Um, this is going to be a very important value along with the previous tool diameter or in corner radius. You have your depth options down here. Uh, very important to note, user define as you define and tell it how high above the part. Uh, which is really just how high above the coordinate system and how far down from the coordinate system do you want to go. Um, and then you just have your different depth options for machining surface from stock and from both. Next we have different lead in options. You can use a plunge or a ramp. I have mine set to center cutting tool as we are using a half in, or a one inch ball in mill for this operation. So we're going to next. Again, you have your rust roughing operation in here. We are not going to cover this until the next section of our part. And you can use machine flat lands where available it will cut the flats uh, regardless of what you have your step down set to. Um, for the part that we're doing, it's actually curved. So this option, checked or unchecked, is not going to make a difference. It's still going to leave some material at the bottom because the way that three dimensional roughing tool paths work is it just goes to the next available step down can't make that step down it's just going to ignore the material that's sitting there and then you have just different options down here that you can use always reference the picture to see what the avail what it does as far as for changing the calculation of the toolpath so we're going to go to our next page and just one more thing to note real quick though is you have your processing area down here you can choose by area which is going to do one area then move to the next or you can do by level where it cuts everything on the same level moves down to the next for this tool path we're actually doing it by level just to kind of help uh, keep everything consistent and last but not least you're going to have your linking page rapid recheck for large gap very important to kind of note this here because when you're cutting a large surface area such as our part that we have here when you have rapid recheck for large gaps checked instead of feeding to the next available segment it will lift up and move over so just kind of keep note uh, in a lot of cases this is very useful to keep checked so we're just going to go ahead and finish and I'll show you what this toolpath did for us here and you can see it 
we zoom in here, you can see where it's making arc moves. It's not making line point to point moves. Very important to keep note of this. Okay, moving on to our next operation, we're going to go ahead and blink this toolpath out, and we're going to go ahead and move on to our next, which is another advanced rough, but this time it's going to be with the rest roughing option. I'm just going to show you two sections of this. Just do note that all of these parameters do make a difference in the way the toolpath calculates. So one thing I want you to note here is going to be your rough and just keep note of what the diameter and the corner radius is for our next operation. It's going to make a big difference. Um, so next we go to parameters. Notice our allowance here. Uh, keep note of that also. Very important. Um, the dialog doesn't change from one to the other when using the rest roughing, but some of these parameters will make a huge difference in the way that your toolpath calculates. So we're going to go to our options page. Notice we have the rest roughing option checked, and we have the last operation's tool diameter and corner radius along with the allowance entered into our values here. Do note that you do not need to have a previous operation to use the rest roughing function and in a lot of cases uh, you can get away with doing some some machining as a finish using the rest roughing option just depends if you play with the settings to achieve that end so we're going to just go ahead and finish and we'll go ahead and unblank this toolpath here just to kind of show you what it does notice that it is ignoring a large majority of the material that it suspects that the previous tool already cleared so we can pull into here and you can see that it's holding a little bit closer to the sides and uh, it is not cutting into the center of our part there because that material uh, according to our rest roughing operation has already been removed okay moving on to our next rest roughing feature we're gonna go ahead and blank out the previous one and then let's go ahead and expand the next one so let's go ahead and right click hit edit and we're going to go straight to the tool page. Notice that we have reduced the tool size in each advanced rough as we've gone along because the rest roughing calculates the difference that we need. So we're just going to go to parameters. Notice that we're leaving a 5,000th allowance on all sides here. Important for the next section, as we'll note here in a few. Okay, we're going to go straight to options here. Notice rest roughing. Instead of using the one inch tool diameter, we are now using the half inch along with the same allowance. Um, very important because this will affect the toolpath calculation because the half inch with the previous tool allowance has already calculated for that cutout. So we're going to go ahead and finish. Let's just go ahead and unblank this toolpath here and kind of notice it's holding a little bit closer to the walls and the toolpath is significantly different from the previous operation. Okay, we're now going to get into our finish pass here, which we're actually using the equidistant from the Pro Toolpath. Gives us a nice even step over throughout the entire part. So let's go ahead and blank out our rest, our final rest roughing feature here. And let's expand equidistant. We'll right click, hit edit. Notice our dialogues do not change even though we are now in a different toolpath. Very important to note. Um, from toolpath to toolpath, you do not have to worry about different dialogues as far as in the beginning stages. Uh, some, when we get down here, the patterns and parameters and, and those pages will differ. So here we're going to use the rough. We're using a half inch ball end mill here to do our finish pass. We're going to go to our pattern, standard. Just kind of follow along with the picture. It gives you a good example of what the toolpath you're going to get. As you click, it's going to update that picture to kind of show you what the expected toolpath will look like. And we're using a standard for this one, so we're going to go back, click standard, go to parameters. We're using a 20,000 step over. Uh, very important thing to note about the equidistant offset toolpath is that it will maintain a consistent equal step over from one line to one line. Uh, no allowance as we're using this as a finish pass. And we have our machining tolerance set up a little bit higher. You can adjust this value. Uh, don't ever go above one and a half thou um, or else your toolpath will be not to tolerance which is which is never a good thing and you do again have depth options down here where you can set a top and bottom of job if you want to manually do that yourself so we can go to leads here now notice you still have ramp and plunge but it's added spiral and 
some different lead-in styles down here on the bottom for lead-in, lead-out. Uh, very important to note, you can use these. It kind of gives you different ways for entering the material. I'm actually just using a plunge, but depending on the material type that you're using, you may want to adjust these to better fit different styles of entry into your part. So we're going to go to Options next. Three important things to note in here is you have Extents, Part Bottom, 3D Extents. Uh, extents goes directly to the edge and will not go over that edge. Part bottom will run all the way to the bottom and 3D extents will run to the edge and also go over half the diameter of the entered tool size. We're actually using extents for this one because it gave us the tool path that we were looking for. And I'll go ahead and show that here in a second. So we're going to go to links you see links here you can click follow direct or s link uh, different style of linking from one segment to the other uh, again just can this is more of a personal preference on this one so I'm using follow you can use any of the three and you should still expect good looking toolpath so we go ahead and finish right click and unblink and notice our toolpath here it's only going on the inside and finishing for us looks really good and is exactly what we were expecting for a finish for this part. So let's go back to an ISO 2 here and we'll just do a fit all and then you can kind of see how tight of a step over that is. Nice consistent even steps. Okay moving on to the final segment of our part. We're going to go ahead and blank out our equidistant. One of my favorite tool paths here is the feature pencil. Now, this is probably one of the least utilized functions in Bobcad, but it shouldn't be. It is one of the most high-powered uh, radiusing toolpaths that we have, and it has so much function for doing radiuses that can handle side corners and, and along edges like this. Um, I've seen it where it was, it's been used for uh, cylinder cutouts out of cylinders to create a groove in it. So it's, it's a really useful toolpath. Um, so we're going to go ahead and edit. It's a very simple toolpath, not much to it. And again, you have your rapid speed and top of part page. Posting, uh, notice that you don't have an arc fit or output rotary angle option in here. But you do have work offset, so you can adjust the work offset number. So we're going to go to our tool. We're using a quarter inch ball end mill. Reason is, fill it's right here are actually an eighth of an inch uh, as far as the radius is concerned so this is the tool that we need to cut those radiuses so we're going to go to pattern here really not much in here just a climb or conventional mill option uh, just for the way that the, you want to cut the part so we're going to go to parameters here you can still leave an allowance if you want to come in with another tool and and use that to finish them um, machining tolerance you can adjust that and you can even set this thing to the number of passes uh, that you want to do if you don't want to just take the fillet in one shot say if you're cutting a fillet that's already has material still there that hasn't been removed uh, this would be an important option for you as this is our final operation we actually do not have that uh, restriction so we're doing it in one pass so leads options you have a couple different ones same thing as equidistant you can do them in different ways just depending on the way that you want to do the part and it's going to vary just on how you want to do that uh, we're using a vertical as that's all I really need for this part everything's done and I have no additional material to avoid so in options two options you can either use the tool tip to cent tool center um, that's going to be available in every 3D toolpath minus advanced roughing where it's actually controlled by a center cutting tool. And the final option is going to be our linking. Uh, very basic, not much information here. Kind of again shows you a picture of different ways that it handles it, but uh, this is going to be more personal preference and part based. And in this situation, we're actually using follow. So we're going to go ahead and fit finish. We'll go ahead and unblink this and just kind of notice how that stays on an offset and just runs right down those fillets avoiding every other section of the material uh, very useful tool for finishing those fillets
Okay, the very last thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and simulate our toolpath just to confirm that our toolpath is working correctly. So in order to do that, all you have to do is go to modules, click on mill simulation, let it start. It takes a little bit of time. It's, it's pretty much just loading a secondary program into the Bobcat environment. So once this gets loaded, we'll go ahead and make a couple changes based off the way that I'm going to use the simulation. I like to use the workpiece focus. That way the screen doesn't jerk around too much uh, as it would with tool and machine focus. So I like to blank the toolpath. Uh, I think it crowds a little bit. And I'll go ahead and blank out the solid model. Don't need to see that until the very end. And we'll just go ahead and uncheck initial stock that we don't have a blue rectangle sitting over the part while it's being machined. All we have to do, click the play button and let it run through. It's going to slow it down here a little bit. You can kind of see it gives you a nice clear example of what the part's going to look like as it's machining. Uh, it, this is a very accurate simulation. So as we run through it, we'll go ahead and speed this up a little bit so it doesn't take too long. Please note that there is a lot of stuff that can be done in this simulation. Um, nothing that can't be accomplished in here as far as getting an accurate idea of what the part's going to look like. And now this is going to be our finish. Uh, what we just saw are the two rest roughings. Notice that there wasn't a lot of tool movement in those rest roughing operations. But in the equidistant, there's a lot of tool movement as there is a lot of area that's being uh, cleared out and finished. But notice how nice and smooth that finish is compared to the way that our roughs were looking uh, previously. Now we're just in that pencil and notice all it did is focus on those radiuses there and ignored every other section of that part and we can go ahead and rotate this around and see what our expected finished part will look like. Some of these you can kind of ignore like those right there. That's more just some an accuracy thing but you can if you zoom up close enough and kind of turn it a little bit you can see the expected finish. If you need a better view of what it's going to look like you can click this refine button up here let it go ahead and calculate and it's going to refine the section right here and that is your expected finish look right there gives you really close and you can see a nice even step over uh, from segment to segment so final thing that we have to do here is just go to cam part right click milling tools and select post it's going to take a little bit of time, a lot of toolpath here uh, to post out. And then there you go. You have your NC code here and it is ready to be run on the machine.